Hi, I'm Alexander Williamson, and you're watching Fishery. Thanks for joining. So today we're going to be talking about a very bright and shiny special topic here on Fishery, and it is about a parasite that is itty bitty that can turn the surface of any fish into gold. And when I say that, I mean that the light that it produces is the same exact wavelength as a 24 karat polished gold bar, indecipherable in color and reflectiveness, in luminosity, everything except its chemical makeup. Unfortunately, these fish are not truly gold. I am going to bury the lead there, but today we are going to explore this absolutely bizarre phenomenon that can take light and play with it and the way we see it can use a parasitic infection that impacts the way scales form on a fish. And we're gonna be talking about how those scales shimmer and how fish actually use optics, chemistry, evolution, and biology, as well as a little bit of physics to fib their way into the light cycle from every color under the rainbow. Oftentimes fish are actually colored with pigment, but more often, they are colored with something called iridophores, or a little sparkle of light, that silver shimmery thing that gives fish their shiny look. We're going to be talking about what that is, how it evolved, what it's made of, and how awesome it is, and why it's even there. I mean, other than it reflects light, I mean, doesn't that make fish more of an obvious target when they're a glowing beacon of UV light and visible light? We're gonna talk about all that, and we're gonna talk about a parasite that uses these same little cells that glow, and we're gonna talk about how it turns the fish gold. We're gonna jump in and talk about it right now. Now, before we talk about golden fish, or we talk about a parasite that actually engineered a way evolutionarily to end up in a bird when it has to go through the water, go through a aquatic snail, into a fish, and then back into a flying bird again, we need to talk a little bit about what color is and what different colors on fish are made of. So basically, you may think you understand color, and you've got your basic pigments. And you mix pigments together to create different colors. And they're made of different substances that, if you look at under a microscope, they have different properties that reflect different light and basically either absorb or scatter other light. So essentially, everything we see, you're actually seeing a scattered version of everything but one light. So if something is red, it's absorbing all the blue, the green, the yellow, the purple, and just the red light is reflecting back to your eyes from the white light that is made up of all the light, if you refer to the dark side of the moon prism as a reference point. So, in fish, there are actually not many colors possible. And you may be thinking, I've seen fish of every color. Well, let me explain. We gotta go into a little bit of backstory that will reconnect to all of this soon. But I have to tell you about how color and pigmentation is created in fish. And it's similar to as in humans. Now humans, we have our skin that's kind of a clearish white color, a little bit off tan, maybe a little gooey with some uh, blood in there. So a little bit of red and pink in there, but really we're kind of an off white tan with a little bit of pink color. And it is due to a color known as melanin, which is a black pigment. That's also the same pigment that's in fish and just about every other organism that is dark that causes us to look darker. Now, when you look at melanin through layers of living skin, it doesn't look so black. It looks like a more of a brown color or a tan color. And this is true, the more you have of them, the darker it looks. Just like pixels on a screen, you're not actually seeing each cell when you look at the skin. You're seeing it from far away and not zoomed in. But if you could zoom in, you would see that darker people have a darker or a denser arrangement of these cells all throughout their flesh, and that lighter skinned people have less of it. Well, fish have this color, so a black base, and their flesh happens to not be so pink or off tan, happens to be more of a white or clear color generally. So basically they've got a base color of white 
and then they've got cells that are black called melanophores or that contain melanin. Well, they also have iridophores, and those are a different type of cell, but they contain crystals that reflect light. This is important, but let me finish telling you what other colors are actually physically present in the fish. So, the physical color of red is possible in fish through carotenoids or through things like lycopene that are eaten in the diet, and this is often expressed as different colors of yellow, red, or orange hues. Now, these are cells under the skin, and just like we talked about, when they're viewed and they're deep down in the skin, or rather, deep in the scale of a fish, they may not appear so red, and they may look more of a mild orange color, or even a light yellow color. And if there's a lot of them in there, they're going to appear darker orange, darker orange, all the way until they're red, or even a crimson, deep, deep red color. Well, there's also yellow cells, and these you can see oftentimes in animals with what we call leucistic traits. And these are leukocytes. And they are similar to the other cells, only they reflect the white light. So when you see an animal with normal colored eyes or patches of normal skin, uh, it's not albino, it's leucistic. It's because it doesn't have the red cells and it doesn't have the black melanin. It just has the white reflective cells. So basically we're working with red, white, black, and yellow. And when you see brown or colors like that, it's just a mix of a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of black, and a little bit of skin in the way. So you can create a lot of colors with this. However, nature is very clever. Blue is a color that doesn't happen physically in the skin of almost any creatures. There are a few exceptions, there's a few butterflies, and there's an entire episode from another channel that I would love for you guys to watch if you're curious on this because it's actually a physics issue and it's actually a chemical reaction that occurs and tricks the viewer. But for what we're talking about today, that will be linked below in the description. And for what we're talking about today, we need to get back to the things that end up turning into gold, which are iridophores. Now, iridophores are like little snow globes that are also for pigmentation of coloring or for coloring fish. And when light shines through them, it's just like a prism, like the Dark Side of the Moon album cover. Light rays come out from different colors and some get absorbed just like any item there is in the world it reflects certain colors and it absorbs or scatters others well these are designed essentially evolutionarily to make blues purples and greens most vividly but they also make bright silver or kind of opalescent colors and when you look under a microscope you see that there's thousands of these on every cell of every scale of every fish scale and they're basically little snow globes when they're forming because they're made completely out of a chemical compound called guanine and it is one of the most simple basic building blocks of life there is guanine is extremely simple and it's all over the place and that combined with a few other things, a little dash of carbon, a little dash of oxygen, this or that, allows it to create very elaborate crystals. And these crystals form at an extremely small level, and each crystal has different properties. Now you may be thinking, why are there little crystals all over every cell of every fish? And, you know, well, it's to make them shiny and silver. No, it's actually a secondary trait. It is an armor. It is a type of defense. So these are also very, very strong, and they play a lot of roles in the body that I can't get into right now, but guanine is an important chemical all around, as is melanin, as is anthocyanin and lycopene and all these other chemicals we talked about that have to do with color. We can't get into that today, but we will talk about how this is an armor evolutionarily. Fish evolved armor before they evolved color. So originally, they have this armor all over them, and just like you'd think, it's plates of these crystals stacked up over each other. But to form, they need to be in a liquid solution of basic molecules of guanine and water, and it can't have any pressure or anything like that, so it forms in this membrane of a cell, just like a little snow globe. And in that little snow globe, these crystals form, and even though in laboratories humans have tried to make them similarly and reflect the same kind of light with the same strength, 
We can't seemingly do it. Ours end up being 10 to 20 times thicker to have the same reflective properties, and yet they're weaker than these organic ones. So this biochemistry that goes on within each scale and within the flesh of a fish is creating strength, and it helps fight against things like parasites and things like being rubbed against a rough surface or being bit by teeth or claws from another organism. And so as you would think of armor, it is saved for the most important places first. So a lot of times you see this armor, which is made up of these shimmering scales, essentially, and you see it around the face. A lot of fish have this armor all around their eyes and gill plate, and that's where it's thickest, so that's where we see this blue, sparkling, reflective color the most. Now, you may be wondering, well, a lot of fish have pretty elaborate patterns, and, you know, we're going to be talking about how a fish gets turned all gold. What, what's going on here? What, how do colors, like, don't they mix like a palette? And they don't. It's more like watching TV, and the pixels could be red, green, and blue, and that can make almost every color you can imagine on a TV screen. Well, in fish, it's all a secondary factor to them being armor. So some of these cells are on the actual uh, scales of fish. Some are in the flesh of the fish or in between the scales. But when we see them reflective and being a camouflage, this armor has also evolved for its color properties. Or rather to say... It's great that it's protective to the fish, but the fish that had light armor on their belly and darker colored armor on top actually lived longer. So a lot of fish you'll see have a silver or reflective colored belly or bottom half, and their top half or their back is darker. And from looking down from above like a bird would, it's a dark object that blends in with the dark of the water and maybe they just see a silhouette maybe they see nothing but ideally those iridophores scatter light out to the sides and not straight back up to say a bird well when these little tiny parasites do their mischievous work they get into the fish and they cause the formation of those little snow globes of crystals that reflect light in all different colors they cause them to deform in a consistent way and basically while they're supposed to form in this perf perfect little vacuum of a snow globe it gets too much mucus too much little elements and impurities and it ends up becoming a crystal that reflects a gold color specifically it reflects a gold color up and backwards so if you're standing above a fish and behind a fish it is going to glow the most gold if it has this parasite impacting it. Now the parasite doesn't actually hurt the fish other than cracking some of those cells and potentially making these fish prone to skin infections a little bit more because their literal armor is cracked. But let's just finish up our talk about the color mixing. So the colors, when you see these subtle hues and beautiful colors in freshwater fish, what you're seeing is either it through the scattering of flesh or scales that have a thickness you're seeing either red yellow black or white colors as pixels around it and you're seeing the reflective blue purple or green and as i said blue is the rarest color of all so you actually don't find a cell there's nothing in the tissue of a fish that is inherently blue so it's really fascinating that you're actually essentially hallucinating the blue uh, because of the wavelengths of light interacting with one another and appearing that way to the viewer and to fish. Well, it also does this with UV light. And as I was saying, predators from down below usually uh, don't see the fish because it's reflective and it scatters UV light and visible light. Well, when this little parasite gets into the fish, the immune response of the fish disrupts its slime coat and the formation of these guanine crystals, and it actually uh, causes them to stack at a different angle and overlap differently, and they're one, not as strong, but two, they're also going to be reflecting colors differently. And so they don't reflect colors downward differently, which is amazing, but only upwards. And the life cycle of this parasite, as we talked about, it goes from the bird and in its gut, then the bird goes to the bathroom, and these adult worms in the bird's stomach 
had basically reproduced and laid eggs, so when the bird goes to the bathroom, it ends up in the water as eggs. These little eggs or larval basic forms of the parasite then usually end up in a snail and grow a bit. Then they leave the snail and enter a fish, or a fish eats the snail, or they may be free-floating in the water. You know, there's a lot of research being done on these topics, but we don't really know about for sure the life cycle at play in this specific uh, disorder and if there are more than one pathogen causing it. But it ends up in the fish. And then of all the incredible things on Earth that could happen, it turns silver and white colored base tone fish like the Hemigrammus rodwei, which is a nice little silver fish, and it turns it into a bright beacon of gold, which is the best seen color for birds from above in water. <laughs> and those birds swoop down and eat that little golden lure of a fish, and that parasite that's in the muscle of the fish then completes its life. It mates with its partner inside the bird's stomach, and the bird then uh, releases itself, and it leaves it in the uh, stool of the bird into the water, hopefully, again. A fairly benign parasite in that it only allows for slightly more uh, prevalence of skin infections, ick, and things like that in the fish that it affects. But they were actually uh, such different-looking fish due to this parasite, this trematode, as it's called, which is similar to a nematode, which you may have heard of, that they caused it to be identified as the Hemigrammus armstrongi instead of the Hemigrammus rodwei. They thought there was a gold species and a silver species for a long time. Well, there's only the silver species, and in the wild, it almost always gets this trematode that causes that immune reaction and causes it to turn gold. Well, sometimes it doesn't, and it stays silver or a bluish silver, and the other colors show up a lot better, and so there's some markings that also help uh, to identify the fish that are a little bit camouflaged. But in captivity, this parasite needs that full life cycle. It needs a snail, it needs a bird, it needs time, it needs water, it needs all these things, and it can't complete its cycle. So these characteristics don't pass on in the fish in captivity when they're bred in captivity, even if they're bred with fish that have the parasite in them. So have no fear of that. But if you're trying to breed goldfish, you're going to find that it is one of those things that so far humans have not been able to do in captivity. Maybe we'll find a way to manipulate the slime coat and the autoimmune response of these little fish and of their armor and, and their iridophores someday. But until then, we'll just have to keep discovering which new species are rife for showing this. Because we are finding it now in pencilfish and tetras beyond just the rod wayi or the silver and gold tetra, and we're probably finding it in all sorts of fish, but it's just the other colors in their skin don't allow it to be highlighted as such a uh, startling 24 karat gold looking feature. Hey guys, you made it to the end, which makes you a special minority. <laughs> yes, most people don't make it to the very end, and most people are not subscribed. If you wanna fix these problems in my life, yes, there are major problems in my life, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, join the channel, subscribe, become a member if you're feeling really fishy. Thank you so much for watching it. I couldn't do these deep dives into topics without you, without the members, without the comments, and without people sharing. So thank you so much. Remember, sharing is caring, and we care a lot. If you're Gen X, you might get that. All right, you guys, I will see you on the next episode of Fishery. Take care.